welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. Hang on. Let's see if I can insert a little bit of film here. Okay, Angie, this is for you. Go ahead, babe. When will I be YouTube famous? You have to sing it. Probably never. <laughs> I can't sing that. It's not my song, man. It's not my song. I don't remember when, this song. Will I be too famous? When? Will I? <laughs> no, when? When? I'd never. <laughs> so, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, if you too sing along with me, just like uh, Queenie's hubby does, then you can probably guess what's coming next. Well, you've seen the thumbnail, you've seen the title, and you might even have read the description. You know. This is a tutorial with the new Revolution Forever Flawless Ice Palette. So, what did I think of this palette? How well did it perform? More importantly, do I recommend it to you? There is only one way to find out these answers. And that is to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. This is actually my second film of the day with this. My first film is comparing this in a dupe off against the Jeffrey Blue Blood palette because let's face it, isn't that what we all thought of when we saw it? Hmm. Uh, I think the other film's going to go up for this one. If it has, I'll tag it in the description box. If it hasn't, keep an eye out for it. But this is the Makeup Revolution or Revolution Makeup. Forever Flawless Ice Palette. It's one of their tinned palettes. I've got another one of their tinned palettes called Constellation. If you want to see me use that one, let me know. But, I have already created one eye look with this today. So now I'm going to dip into some different shades to produce a different eye look and test out more of the shadows. Da, 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 da. Right. <laughs> I genuinely have no idea what that was. I'm losing my mind. It's hot in my kitchen. I haven't been able to film for ages due to chronic pain issues. And today my chronic pain is about at level 7 or 8, which is a good day for me. So I'm hoping I'm going to get at least two films done. Maybe three, but I think probably two, otherwise I'm going to knack myself out and I need to have some energy for editing tomorrow. Faces washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And I've used this, which is the antiperspirant face primer that I use. It's actually a facial antiperspirant, but as you can see up here it does say primer qualities. Um, you can use other primers underneath it. Um, I've used the No Problem primer underneath it. I've used um, the this thing, the W7 Princess Potion thing, which is like their version of Fasali. Um, the only thing you do have to remember is if you are going to be using another um, primer or primers underneath it 
you have to make sure those primers are absolutely dry before you go in with the antiperspirant one otherwise you'll get pilling and the antiperspirant pro uh, properties are not as effective seeing as how that's the main reason for using it on my eyes as ever is my crow and a pebble blank page cotton which is the white one and uh, just to prove a point uh, yeah this is my sample pot which is basically a, a normal size pot but just like half or a third filled you can see I've hit pan on that right it's fine I've bought myself a full size one this has taken over from I used to use um, just like shape tape or something then I got into using the Max Soft Ochre paint pot, which was great, but it's very yellow toned. The Painterly paint pot, which is the more pink toned one, didn't grab shadows as well as Soft Ochre did. But I tried this out when I bought their pastel pigments. And I love this because it, it goes on. And let me just zoom you in a minute, I'll show you what I mean. When you put this on, I've got deep set eyes, so normally I'll get creasing right through here instantly that I, you know, sort of like move my eyes around after putting a primer on. It doesn't crease, it's not sticky, it's dry to the touch, so you don't have to pat the, the, the eyeshadow in first and then blend it out. You can blend straight away on this. Um, it is by far the best the absolute best eye primer I have ever used. Crow and Pebble offered me a discount code but until I had tried more of their items I wasn't prepared to offer it to you. Now I, because I'd, I'd used some of their products as a customer first without telling them I had a YouTube channel. So I knew I liked their, their pigments. Um, and then they released this so I approached them saying look I'm a YouTuber I really want to try your pastel ones that you're bringing out. Um, any chance of buying them off of you before launch date so that I can get a film out for you and hopefully drive traffic your way. Um, which they thankfully were very happy to let me do, which I can't thank them enough for that. And I bought the primer as well because I thought use it on their primer gives it the absolute best chance of performing well because obviously pastels can be a little hit and miss but theirs were absolutely bloody fantastic and I've used it on other primers as well it's not it doesn't that they're, they're the crow and pebble pigments don't just work on their primer they work on all primers but that's a very long-winded way of saying I have got a discount code for them um, and it's all in the comments box uh, description box below as always with all my others and they're all clearly marked whether I earn from them or not now I'm a teaching channel. That combined with my chronic pain and my tendency to waffle on, as you've probably already noticed, means that my films are longer than most people's. Just, there's a speed widget up there, just feel free to use it because, let's face it, I'm not even going to know whether you've used it or not, am I? Let's be, let's be fair now. Um, but I want to make sure that even absolute beginners can follow my tutorials. Now, I need to just talk you through the difference between deep set eyes and hooded lids because for a long time I thought I had hooded eyes because I was getting the transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. If I was trying to cut my crease I couldn't just cut the socket like everybody else. I was having to cut up onto the upper lid. Even when I used glitter glues I was getting a bare patch right through here. Couldn't understand why. Now, when I relax my brows and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids. I have deep set eyes. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line, part or all of your lower lid, that you have either a full or a part hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorial, you can still follow anybody's tutorial. Get a brush like this, or a pencil brush, 
and just create yourself a new crease line. I normally put a deeper colour through the crease anyway, so from a distance when people are talking to you, it will appear that that part of the, the, the eye is further back because I always use a deeper colour through the crease. So it will give you that illusion. It will obviously reduce the space between your new crease and your brow, so I'll just use slightly smaller brushes than I do. Now, deep set eyes. Let me show you why we have the same problems. If I, because this is my blind eye, so I can close this one and still see what I'm doing and make sure I'm still in focus. If I cover my visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again that folds back away. If I cover my upper lid, you can see again. I've got a patch of skin there that folds back away as well. That is a deep set eye. Now, to do colours on a deep set eye, you have to do them slightly differently. You have to sit back, relax your brows, look forward. Any colour that you want to appear, like if you, when you put the darker colour through the crease, if you want to see it, you have to sit back and make sure you've come up high enough here. All right. But you'll see that as I go through. Right, I'm using the Ron and Langnickel Chic Pro Crease Brush to start with. It is clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to start off by going into Crystal. Now blues and greens are the most difficult shades to do, that and purples obviously. And this is mainly a blue and green palette. There are enough neutrals in here, you could do a neutral look. But if you bought this, you haven't bought it because you want to do a neutral look. So I'm going to start off with this crystal. I'm going to run it through windscreen wiper movement backwards and forwards through the crease. Pick up a bit more of the pigment. Then I'm going to do circular movements going towards the nose as I come towards it and then reverse in the direction and coming away from the nose as I come back. Always hold your brush right at the end so you put as little pressure as possible onto your eyelid. I just knocked my face wipes down. Pearls are having a big butt. I like big butts that I can not like. <laughs> Oh yeah, I often break into song as well if you're new here. Half Welsh, half Yorkshire, it, it happens. I like to leave sort of three or four mil below my brow. Just so that the brow highlight that I'm going to put on later will show up. And I'm just now doing a mixture of circular and tiny windscreen wiper movements just to blend this shade out over the lid I'm trying to make sure I don't use the same shades in this tutorial that I used in the um, comparing to the Blue Blood tutorial now this side I can actually close my eye and show you a bit easier so windscreen wiper backwards and forwards to the crease now, I've got super super deep crease in here as you can see, that's when my eye was pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital when I was 5 years old, 40 years later, that's what it does to your eyes. So I do have to, when I'm doing shimmers etc and when I'm doing the final deep colour through the crease, I do have to stretch that lid out slightly just to make sure that I've not got any barcoding or tiger striping happening and to make sure that shimmers don't end up cascading down my face during the day. I'm just dipping back into the palette every so often to pick up a little bit more pigment because I'm not loading too much pigment onto the brush so that we don't get um, very much fallout if any. This is such a pretty shade. I mean you could quite easily just pop this pastel all over do yourself a nice thick wing liner, lashings of mascara, 
and you're done for the day. But we're playing with the palette. I wasn't going to buy this because obviously I've got blue blood. But then one of my best mates, Sophie, said to me, well, you could always buy it and do a comparison with blue blood. And then I could buy it off of you because she hasn't got blue blood and she wants it. But it's like, well, thankfully hubby bought mine for me. Otherwise I wouldn't have been able to afford it. So, she kind of tempted me, so that's what we're doing. I've done one film this morning where I compared it to Blue Blood. Now I'm doing this film where I'm going to use as many of the other shades as possible. And then I doubt you'll see this on my channel again because Sam's going to buy it off me. Now I'm just cleaning my brush on a microfiber cloth. I prefer to do that rather than use a colour switch. I find it's more gentle on the brush on the bristles, especially if you're using natural bristles. I mean, I'm not. I'm these are synthetic, um, but if you are using natural bristles, then you're much better off using a microfiber cloth or even a flannel or an old towel rather than a colour switch. Because I found they were starting to pull some of the bristles out, which I didn't like. Right, I'm going to go into. Freeze next. And I'm going to start off the same way, going through windscreen wiper there. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hello, pigment. That's lovely, look at that. But now this time, when I do the blending, I'm not going to go up the eye very much. I'm going to keep the brush in contact with that initial windscreen wiper line that I put through. So I'm only actually going about halfway up the original colour. So I'm just going backwards and forwards a few times so that the edge is really nicely blended into the lighter shade. Did you see how easily that blended? Blues don't blend this well. I've got to be honest, I think these tinned palettes that Revolution have done, they're Forever Flawless line. Um, as I said, I've got another one, I've got the Constellation one. I think these are by far their best formula that they've released. Um, I just... These are pigment-wise and how long they last on the eye. They are absolutely comparable to high end without any shade, shadow, or doubt at all. Um, if I didn't have blue blood, I would definitely buy this. I'm actually tempted to pick up the fire one because it looks to be a dupe of the new Natasha's Lona Sunrise palette. But I don't really wear a lot of traditional warm tones and if I'm going to wear those I'll grab either slush one or two or um, the warmer side of the full fusion palette from Blush Tribe. So that's really pretty. They've, they've blended together so nicely. I know I shouldn't sound surprised, but I'm just a little bit surprised. Right, cleaning the brush off. I'm going to grab another Royal and Langnickel brush, but this time it is the eyeshadow brush, which is oval rather than being round when you look at it from the top. And I am going to go into... I think I'm going to go into break because that's a greeny blue. Like a, like a deep teal. Let's see how that looks. Now I'm going to do tiny windscreen wipers initially because it's such a deep colour. I don't want a massive amount of fallout. 
this is what I mean about deep set lids chaps and chapesses when you look at it like this you can see I need to go up just a little bit more there so that it's visible there we go right so now I'm going to pick up some more pigment on this brush and I'm going to blend just on that line not above it not going up the eye at all I'm just blending on that line which is a really pretty colour It's building up nicely as well without going patchy. Hmm. Having used both Blue Blood and this, if you can't afford Blue Blood but you want a good blue palette and you can't afford um, you know, the Affinity 2 from Certify or um, the Tarte Icy Betch, not that I rate that very highly anyway. Uh, but if you can't afford those, I mean, this is 10 quid, and you absolutely will get good colour from it, good pigmentation. Gonna make sure I've not got any barcoding going on over here. Now I usually struggle here and here to get pigment to build up because of creasing and you can see it's starting to go a wee bit patchy just there. Now I'm going to try building it up a little bit more but I am going to put a deeper shadow over the top so I'm not overly worried if I can't build Oh. Having said that, that built up very nicely, thank you. If we were stopping with just this colour, what I would do is I'd pack the pigment on the brush and then just tap it into the area that I wanted to build the colour up in. Right. Clean the brush. which is taking a little bit longer than I anticipated because that is very, very pigmented. Very pigmented indeed. Now, where's my nice little brush gone? I know one of them's over there being washed. Ah, there we go. Right, this is the Morphe M562. Love, love, love this little brush. Now I'm going to go into Arctic, which is actually a shimmer. And I'm going to pop this just in little circular movements, just on the very outer edge here. Just to really just deepen up just that very outer edge. Can you see the difference that's made? Just literally just the barest little bit. Just to and by using a super fluffy brush, what we're doing is we're actually buffing away the shimmer pigments and just leaving the base colour underneath. Again, same thing this side. Little circular movements.
just to deepen up the outer corner. Now blending shimmers does take a little bit longer because obviously they're not designed to be blended, they're designed to be packed on. So you do need to have a little bit of patience when you're blending a shimmer. But the end result is worth it. And I'm just going to add a little bit of... I might change brushes actually for the next bit. Let's clean that brush off. And I'm going to grab, this is a Morphe M321, going back into that Arctic shade. I'm just going to add that just onto the outer corner. of the lid. I've come further up the brush just so I've got more precision over where I'm laying the pigment. but I'm still not putting a lot of pressure on at all. So again, just build that pigment up just on the outer third there. Just so we've got a little something, something going on. Now is the fun bit. Ah, the shimmers. Right, let me just grab a wipe. Just going to tidy up some of this fallout. Otherwise it'll annoy the heck out of me when I'm editing. This is why I always do my base after I've done my eyes. Right. Now, I have got... No, I don't like the feel of that brush. I'm not going to use that one. Right, this is one of the brushes that I got. They're actually designed for um, nail art, for acrylic. Uh, this I got a set of six of them, I think, for about five, five and a half, six quid on eBay. This is number 12, which I think means it's 12 millimetres wide. But they come down lovely and thin at the side, you see, which is just what I like. I'm going to grab a spray. Now, never go into a pressed pigment. Oh, sorry, I need to wiggle. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. Always load the brush up and then spray the brush. I'm going in with this I Heart Revolution Fixing Spray in Vanilla and Coconut. You can use anything, you can use a moisturising spray like MAC Fix Plus or Mario Badescu. You can use a setting spray, you can use a priming spray, you can just use clean water. Right, so I'm going to start off by going into Icicle. I'm going to pack that onto both sides of the brush. And then just wet both sides. Now I always dry the ferrule off here so that you don't get any moisture going down and loosening the glue that holds those bristles in. 
just going to grab a little mirror to look down into so you can see what I'm doing with this eye. I'm just going to pop this in the middle of the eye and bring it across to meet the deeper shade that we have in the outer third. And then clean and dry the brush off before going back in again to do the other eye. Clean and dry. So going back into icicle. Same on this side. You can see these shimmers are super, super shiny. This is not foiling your shadows, however. I hear so many people say that, and it's not. This is applying your shadow wet. If you're foiling the shadow, you are mixing a loose pigment with a mixing medium and turning it into a liquid or a paste. That is falling your shadows. Right, so cleaning and drying the brush off again. And I'm going to go into a glacier. Which is a beautiful sort of silver mercury shade. Dry the ferrule off. Grab my little mirror to do this side with. Pop that into the corner. Now, yes, I'm going to get some of this shimmer transfer up, but I'm really not bothered. The whole point of me doing it like this is because I wanted to see, I didn't want to cut my crease, I wanted to see if these shimmers had enough pigment cover the deeper shadows above it and they absolutely do. You can see with the tip of the bristles I'm just gently buffing the two shimmers together where they meet just so we get a nice transition. That's lovely. That really is beautiful. That, that glacier is an outstanding standing shade. Draw the brush off and go back into glacier for the other eye. Now that said with this one I do have to stretch it out otherwise the shimmers end up filling the creases in but without being actually blended like I'm doing at the moment and they end up through the day as they dry out every time I blink I get cascading shimmers down my cheeks which if I wanted to slowly create lots of sparkly freckles through the day Perfect way to achieve it. Not the look I'm going for for today though. So again, I'm just blending where those two shades meet. Oh, I do like that. Such a pretty look. Right. I am going to pause you while I go off screen and I'm going to pop some foundation and whatnot on and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you you will see me instantly I will see you the very next time I push the record button I'm back you won't know this but that took a lot longer than it would normally have done 
because I had a phone call in between. I have gone for blue brows today and I have used the Revolution Pigment Pomade in the shade Ocean Blue. <laughs> Because I thought the turquoise wouldn't show up enough with all these deeper colours. Right, grabbing my brush that we discussed earlier. And I am going to go into... Let's try some different colours that I haven't tried yet. Uh, I'm going to go into H2O. Which is... It's like a navy, but it's sort of a what I'd call a dusty navy, almost a, a purpley, cornflowery, I don't really know what I'm saying to be honest. But I'm going to run that along underneath the lower lash line. That's actually a really nice colour. This is darker than it looks in the pan, which is good. I did not realise that. But I like it. I like it a lot. And I'm cleaning the brush off and I'm going to get myself my little stubby brush. Now this was in the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette. I love it because it's flat on top but it's chunky. So it's great for getting up under your lashes and buffing colours out. And I think I will go into... I'm going to Drench, which is a mint. I'm just going to use that buff that lower lash line out, soften it up and add a little bit of a lighter colour underneath. Mm -hmm. I think you can tell I'm quite liking this palette. Is so pretty. Right, now this is a lip brush that I bought from eBay probably about 10 years ago now. I'm just going to dip into cool. I'm going to pop that just up under the tail of my brow. Like so. And then in the corner, I like to bring it along underneath my tear duct and just buff it in to the colour that I've run underneath my eye. Do the same thing this side. like that a lot. Okay, I'm going to pause you one more time while I go and put some highlight on, some mascara, some lippy, I do something with my hair, 
and I'll be back for my final thoughts. See you right now. And I'm back. Right. I actually used, this was reduced on Revolution's site. This is their Makeup Obsession Live Love Love Blush and Light Palette which has got a lovely mirror in it so I won't blind you with it but it looks like this. Now I've actually used this blush as my bronzer today. It's a bit pinky but it worked and then I used this apricot one for my actual blush. Um, this is a satin and this is a shimmer so I'm guessing these are the two highlights and obviously this is for light to medium skin tones because that's the deepest blush they've got um, but this was ridiculously cheap um, so if they've still got it on the site then I'd definitely recommend grabbing it because they blended so nicely the highlight on my face is the Nikki Tutorials Ofra collab of Space Baby which is the one with the blue reflect to it and the mascara is my as usual Catrice Glamondol waterproof volume mascara the lipstick is this one from ASM Artistry I'll just show you how that's spelled And I got the Nude Cool Vanilla. Again, magnetic closure, so you can do all the ASMR bits and pieces. Um, and obviously it gives you the tingle as well. You, they have two different colours available on their site at the moment. They've got the, the Nude, which I've gone for, and they have a red one. Um, you can have either Cool Tingle, Warm Tingle or No Tingle. Um, and they smell like vanilla, or you can, I believe you can have them with no scent as well so but I've really I've worn this pretty much every day since they sent it to me to try um, I did get this for free it's currently it's normally 33 quid it's currently 21 pounds on their site um, I really like it it goes on super got out of my teeth perils of bullet lipsticks there we go it's super soft, super light, super creamy. Once the tingling dies down, and it's not a painful tingling like some of these, it's not like the lip plumpers where you're like, oh my god, someone is attacking my mouth with needles. It just doesn't feel like that at all. It's more of a. I've just eaten something spicy and my lips are a bit tingly. It, it, it's, you know, the kind of. You know. Or I've just sucked on an ice cube and my lips have got a bit... It, it's a similar sensation to that. Um, once that dissipates, which is usually sort of like between... Usually around about the five minute mark I stop noticing it. You don't feel like you've got anything on your lips. If anything it feels more like a lip balm than a lipstick. Um, it's absolutely perfect shade. Um, I'm a, a neutral to cool undertone, but this has got a, although it's a nude, it's it's almost got like a peachy undertone to it, and peach are one of the few shades that will actually work on all undertones, cool, neutral, warm, olive, golden, peach will work on all of those, so if you're interested in grabbing one of those, I will try to remember to link it uh, in the description box. If not, um, they're on Insta as uh, ASM Artistry Official, if I forget to link them. But I have been using that, as I said, pretty much every day since I got it. But we're not here to discuss that, we are here to discuss now this, as I said, this is the second time I've used this now. I've, I've done one look with it 
where I did it in a palette dual against uh, Blue Blood and then I've created this stunningly icy blue look with it today. I really like this palette. Um, I really like this palette. It's super high pigmented. It's, it's got the same pigmentation as some of my Blush Tribe palettes or my September Rose palettes or um, I mean, it can even be built up to the same level as the Jeffree Star palette. Yes, you have to build it up more, but you can get it there. Um, I was super surprised by this. Blues are a very, very difficult shade to do. And I liked their Icy Betch um, dupe that they did. I've still got that over here. Is that there? Yeah. Which was this one. Which is their reloaded deep dive. Let me just show you the difference in the two palettes. Someone's burning something. Yep, yeah, it's not my fan. So this was the deep dive, which I loved. This is four quid. This is the uh, Forever Flawless Ice, which is ten quid. These two palettes together, I mean, on their own, they're great palettes. Together, this is a knockout team for fourteen quid. I thought the pigments in this was good. The pigmentation in this blows this out of the water and I like this palette. I like their uh, reloaded palettes. Um, all of their four pound reloaded palettes have really good pigmentation to them but I think if I had to choose one range of palettes that Revolution do that I had to give a gold star to it would be these ones in the tins the Forever Flawless range I've got the Constellation one as well um, I love these, these are far and above the best um, shadows that Revolution have ever produced and if you've got a tenor floating spare and one of these takes your fancy um, if you're not into the icy blue blood the other one they've got out at the moment is because they've got fire and ice and the fire one is a dupe for the new Natasha Denona 65 pound palette the sunrise palette is a dupe for that so if you're looking either at your blue blood which is 50 odd quid or your Natasha Denona which is 60 odd quid pick up one of these £10 ones instead and you will not be disappointed. You can create very, very similar, if not identical looks with these palettes. Um, and anybody seeing them on your eyes would not think this was a drugstore palette. They would not think this is a £10 palette that you're wearing at all. So, there we go. Tinned Revolution palettes, get a two thumbs up from me. I absolutely love them and I think I'm going to have to get some more of them. Huh. I might get um, the, the fire palette because this one I'm actually selling to my mate. Um, because obviously I've got blue blood, I don't need this as well. Um, and I said to her, I don't really need to buy it. I said, but I want to get it because I want to test it. And she said, well, why don't you buy it, film with it, and then just sell it to me. So, cheers, Soph. That's exactly what's happening. So I've done my two films with it, and uh, I should be taking that to her tomorrow. Well, tomorrow when I'm filming this, not tomorrow when you're watching it. I'm blethering again, aren't I? It's got hot. I need to stop. I need to go and have something to drink. Clearly my blood sugar levels are dipped. Right, 
if you are one of my 4F babies, please, please double check you are still subscribed. I'm still having people getting unsubscribed. I'm still having people's notification bells being unrung. It drives me absolutely crackers. Um, even if I'm still appearing in your newsfeed, please just double check that the subscription button isn't red, that it is still grey for you. If this is your first time seeing me, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I don't always blether this much, sometimes I blether more, sometimes I blether less. However, this is a super friendly place to be. Everybody in the comments section is kind and caring and supportive and that's exactly what I want from my 4 f family. So, if you've enjoyed this and feel like hitting that subscribe button, I would be mighty grateful and would be delighted to welcome you to the 4F family. If you're not so sure, I've got an awful lot of films for you that you could go and watch, including the challenge where I pit this against Blue Blood. See if you can work out which one's which on the eyes. Right, that's quite enough self-promotion for me for one day. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.